Ghana joined the World Network of Biosphere Reserves with the Bia Biosphere Reserve in 1983. The Bia Biosphere, just like any biosphere reserve, has three demarcations, namely the core with an area of 29,365 hectares, the buffer of 4,430 hectares, and the transitional zone of 127,551 hectares. The aim of creating the Bia Biosphere Reserve sought to enhance coexistence of local communities and nature in the transitional areas while protecting and conserving the core area. Bia Biosphere Reserve is located in the western north region of Ghana and is endowed with rich biological and cultural heritage. The implementation of the Bia Biosphere Reserve since 1980 to date shows an increase in human interactions in the transitional zone. The map shows an increase in the growth level in terms of settlement, farmlands, roads and bare lands from 1980 to date. Within the same period, the national park continues to increase in canopy cover and density. This clearly demonstrates the mutual coexistence of human and nature within the Bia Biosphere Reserve. In the Bia Biosphere Reserve, specifically at Mansukrom community, lies the Bia River. The river is transboundary and is shared between Ghana and Cote d'Ivoire. The Bia River has recorded declining water quality standards resulting from upstream anthropogenic activities such as illegal mining activity, popularly known as Galamsey, outside the Biosphere Reserve. According to the Water Resources Commission, the state of the Bia River has moved from fairly good to poor quality. One woman in Mansukrom talked about the impact of the change of water quality on their livelihood. Livelihood interventions have been introduced to support communities conserve their natural resources and to improve their livelihood. These include Protected Area Development Program, Biosphere Resources for Biodiversity Conservation and Sustainable Development in Sub-Saharan Africa and the Green Economy in Biosphere Reserves Project. Under the Green Economy in Biosphere Reserves Project, founded by Korea International Cooperation Agency, 220 beneficiaries were trained in four livelihood activities, palm oil processing, beekeeping, mushroom and snail production. In the implementation of the Green Economy in Biosphere Reserves Project, the CREMA played an important role. The community relation officer of the reserve shed light on this. Uh, part of the biosphere or the national park falls within the Juaboso district, and the other part also lies within the Bia West uh, district. And the park is very close to the border of uh, um, uh, Ivory Coast. Yes, yeah, so the park is surrounded about uh, 42 um, communities. And what we have been doing over the days is to ensure that our management strategies, whatever we do, do not uh, affect the livelihoods of the local people. And so we collaborate with uh, both governmental and non-governmental agencies to try to see how to undertake livelihood uh, developments which can enhance uh, or support the, the local people. Uh, I think key among them was the Green Economy Project. Um, which I think uh, spanned for three years since to, from 2013 to 2016. And under that project, a number of um, local people were trained and set up in uh, beekeeping, 
snail farming, mushroom, and then palm oil processing. An opportunity to be part of the Green Economy in Biosphere Reserves project. A beneficiary noted. <laughs> Also, a farm showed us his snail farms and highlighted how the snail farms have considerably improved his livelihood. In addressing the question, has the anthropogenic activities within the Bia Biosphere Reserve impacted communities' livelihood and adaptation? The conservation and management efforts have been remarkable, given the evidence since 1980s, the human activities such as settlement, farmland and road have increased significantly within the transitional areas of the Bia Biosphere Reserve. This demonstrates substantial improvement in human nature coexistence and illustrates in the fact that increased anthropogenic activities within the reserve have not had significant adverse impact on nature. In addition, the increased livelihood interventions has helped ease the pressure on the natural resources in the transitional areas and helped incentivize communities towards supporting conservation. The shift of communities from over depending on natural resources in the transitional areas is improving the woodlands in the transitional area. However, challenges remain and the Bia River is a prime example. The river's quality has been deteriorating, resulting from negative human activities outside of the reserve. The poor water quality of the river is preventing communities from deriving the livelihood sources they use to acquire from the river. Expanding alternative livelihood opportunities will provide decent, sustainable, and environmentally friendly jobs to illegal mining communities. This will reduce illegal miners' activities in destroying the water body and its surrounding natural environment. The evidence above calls for a greater education and awareness creation and intensification of livelihood adaptation support for communities to live in harmony with nature.